end up on this side in recognition to a need tonight. Anybody on this side be remembering uh, Brother Mike Wednesday? He's got some procedures going to be taking place. Maybe anybody on this side just signifying if there's something you're praying about that you just want the church to be remembering you uh, in prayer over. And let's just take these before the Lord tonight in prayer and just ask the Lord to have his way tonight. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity tonight, God, to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, that we know that you're faithful to move, God. We know that you're faithful to heal. We know that you're faithful to strengthen. Lord, I pray for Brother Mike, Lord, in this procedure that's coming up, Lord. We ask that you would help him during this. Lord, I pray, Lord, for needs that maybe someone just didn't even think about, but it's came to their mind even while we're praying. God, we ask you, Lord, just to touch our nation, God. Touch our land, Father. Touch our Congress, Lord, that they would make decisions based upon the leading of your direction, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, continually, Lord, for strength for our church and, Lord, for lost loved ones, God, people that were trying to win for you, Lord, that you would give us strength, Lord. Lord, I pray for the singing tonight and everything, Lord, that would be done. Lord, for the preaching, everything that's going to take place tonight, we just ask that your perfect will would be accomplished tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask my wife to go ahead and take us to the Lord. I'm so thankful for the Lord tonight, and I'm thankful for his blood. Um, it seems like lately, I don't know why, I know it's just the enemy, but I feel like... Um, it's just been like he's been pointing his little bony finger in my face and telling me that I'm not fit for to be used of the Lord and um, all the things I've done or things that I've said that it's been wrong, that I shouldn't even try to be used of God, that I'm not worthy. And I just have to tell him, you know what, I'm not worthy, but God makes me worthy. And his blood applied to my life, it makes me worthy. And um, my righteousness is as filthy rags. There's nothing I can do that makes me worthy but I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus and um and there is a um, scripture and I know I've read it before but um but I've never it never hit me like it did today but um first John 3 and 20 it says for if our heart condemns us God is greater than our heart and he knoweth all things and I looked up that verse and Spurgeon said sometimes our heart condemns us but in doing so, it gives a wrong verdict, and then we have the satisfaction of being able to make take the case into a higher court, for God is greater than our heart, and he knoweth all things. And so I'm so thankful that even when our own heart may condemn us and tell us, why don't you just give up? You're filthy, you're dirty, you're no good, but you know what? God is greater than our heart, and his blood applied to our life makes the difference. And I'm so, so thankful for his blood tonight.
sun sets free, is free indeed. Oh yes, he whom the sun sets free, is free indeed. Thank you, Lord, that he whom the sun sets free, is truly free indeed. Now I'm free to worship. I am free to praise. I am free to lift up holy hands. You're glad to be free. How many remembers that day that you couldn't always sing the song that we're singing, but now you can sing because of what Jesus did? I'm thankful for the blood. I'm thankful for the blood of the Lamb. I thought about in the Bible while she was singing, I couldn't help it. My mind just began to kind of reminisce and go back as if I was there. And I can only imagine the people's faces of that man in Mark 5 as they had tried everything they knew to do to set him free. You know, there's just some things that people can't help. There was things that people couldn't fix. How many remembers things in your life you couldn't fix it? There was times in your life that you sought for help, but nobody else could do it but that man named Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm so thankful for Jesus. I'm so thankful that I'm free to lift up holy hands. I'm free to magnify Him. I'm free to give Him the glory. I thought about all the times that they tried to fix Him. All the times they tried to to do what He needed. But one day Jesus stepped out. And that man ran to Jesus. And I don't know some of the songs they must have sang back then. But Crystal, if you'd one more time as we... Get ready to transition the service. We're going to be moving on. We're going to be shifting in a different direction soon. But can we just get our minds on that moment and remember where you were before Jesus? Sometimes I think when we sing, we forget the before times. We forget the before times of where we were and we forget where God has brought us to. Is anyone thankful for where God's brought you to? I'm not the same man that I used to be. You're not the same woman that you used to be. I thought about when that crowd gathered back. The Bible says when they saw him and he was clothed and in his right mind. Anyone ever seen people that you knew before Jesus? And then you saw him after Jesus? And you could see the change? I believe there's some of you, if we saw you before Jesus, we'd be shocked. But we see you now in a different way. We don't recognize you the same because the Lord has made a change. I'm thankful for that. Sing that one more time and then we're going to be turning it over to my Father, letting Him deliver whatever's on His heart. But let's make a conscious effort. I I know that it's not a lot of people here tonight, but can I tell you, God's here. He's hearing our worship. He's hearing our praise. I know sometimes after revival, there's jet lag. I am tired. I'm very tired tonight. I know there's some that are out sick tonight. But how many knows that God shows up regardless? God's here. So let's give God our best tonight. Let's give God our best praise tonight as she sings that one more time. And then, Father, just take your liberty after that. Thank you. 
When I hear thunder roll, he hold my hand when I begin to tremble, when the winds of this world is blowing strong. Well, now Jesus is with me when the storm clouds gather, he's standing by my side.
there. But I'm glad that Jesus controls the wind. I know somebody asked me tonight, said, who's in charge? I said, Jesus is. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Jesus is in charge. There's no doubt about it. And I couldn't do anything without him. I appreciate him tonight. I really do. And I'm uh, not discouraged at all. I just got out of revival. And I'm wanting to get all the momentum I can get. And uh, I know I'm not taking no night off, you know. When I go to work, I give it my best. When I leave there, they know I've been there. Because I'm not going to play around. I'm going to get with it. Now, I want to talk a little bit about tonight, about Jesus, who's the foundation we're building on. I don't know what people are building on today, a lot of folks. And I looked up that word. You know, I'm not a builder, but I know the importance of a firm foundation. I really do. You see, it's the lowest load-bearing part of a building. And typically, you don't even see the foundation. It's underground. It's below the surface. And it's also an underlying principle or a basis. The idea of a foundation of modern economics, why without stability in our country, and as you can see, <laughs> I'm not a political man. I'm not going to try to get on a political soapbox tonight. But I can tell you, you can see the political uh, areas of our life and our foundations are being attacked. Things that we were built upon. And our founding fathers would roll over in the grave if they heard some of the things they were trying to do today. And the Constitution, I hear them talk about the Constitution. I said, they, they can't even spell it. They don't even know what the Constitution spelled like. Because I'm telling you, it's worth. The Bible says if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And I want to tell you they're important tonight. The foundations. And, you know, I got I, I thought, here it is years later, talking about some of this stuff. And it said uh, why the country would not be able to hold elections. What's under attack right now? Our elections. That's all they fight against. Uh, but our future, our justification, our reasons uh, are distorted. They're misled. And uh, with no foundation, church, we're in shaky ground. We're in shaky ground. But an action of establishing an institution or organization is a permanent basis. And especially with endowment. We hear that word a lot. An example of colleges and uh, a lot of things, they're, they're devoted to financing a research or a charity. There's a foundation involved when they do that. How many knows that? And I thought also tonight, as we were reading, I was looking at Psalms 104.5. We'll read a few scriptures. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? Isaiah 28.16. He said, Therefore saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone. He's a precious stone, church. A sure foundation. And he that believeth shall not make haste. I thought about what John 17, 24 said. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Did you know the Lord loves you before the foundation of the world was even spoke? He loves you. Even while you yet sinner, he loved you. Uh, Romans 15, 20, yea, so I have strove to preach the gospel, or strived, excuse me there, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Now I'm going to tell you, you've got to build on your own foundation. You've got your own porch to sweep. How many knows that? I can't sweep yours. You can't sweep yours. You've got to sweep your own. And the way I look at it, i got plenty to sweep. <laughs> I didn't say sleep. I said, I got plenty to sweep. And uh, I thought about what Ephesians 2.20 said, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. 2 Timothy 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the soul, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Aren't you glad he knows you? He knows you're his. 
and everyone that nameth the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. You can't live in the same old thing and be Jesus but die with Christ. You've got to depart from iniquity. There goes, kind of goes back to what we said the other night, separation. There's a separation that has to happen. You can't live in sin. You go to heaven. It ain't going to work. There ain't going to be no sin there, by the way. I've heard people try to sugarcoat it. Well, you know, Lord's a merciful God. He's going to look over a few things. I'm going to tell you something. He's got one of the best IBM computers there is. He knows everything goes on, and there ain't nothing going to get by him. Nothing. Not one jot, not one tittle. He's going to know it all. So I want to make my election tall and sure, don't you? I absolutely do. Matthew 7, 4. Or 24 through 27, tell the story. We all know it well. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him as a wise man which built this house upon a rock. A sure foundation is what he's talking about. 25th verse says, And it rained descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, as we sang it about a while ago, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. That rock is Christ, church. It was built on the rock. Now, there's a lot of people says they are uh, building on the rock. But when you build on Jesus, you're building on a sure foundation as there is. Hallelujah. Now, 26th verse. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, he said, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended. And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Why was that? It was built on a feeble foundation. It was not built on the rock. You know, you try to build on sand, it ain't too sturdy. But I say, you get down on the rock, it'll stand. It'll stand. Yes, it is. What are you building on? What are you building on tonight? I felt like the Lord challenged me with that thought. What are you building on? You see, a foundation built on God produces faith in life. It allows us to live it, uh, be a living example that others can see. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be a light. We don't want to send a message. I want people to see me, to know he's a Christian. He, he says the right things. He does the right things. I don't want to disappoint people. That's why you got to keep prayed up because it only takes one thing. To, to finish that testimony. The Bible said a brother offended is harder to win than a city. I mean, know that. It's true. Dig your foundation deep, church. Develop a deep faith. Building a sure spiritual foundation means investing. you got to inspect. you got to ensure your foundation is maintained, giving us the instructions to do this. Learn to trust God with the small stuff, and God will let you have the big stuff. A lot of times we wonder why God doesn't give us greater things. Because you ain't too good a spirit with the little things. Well, you do the little things right, you'll trust him with the big things. I heard a story, kind of made me laugh, uh, about these uh, man and woman was living in a two-store house, they said. Said she had her store, said he had his. Come on, lighten up. Hallelujah. You know how it is to get married, folks. <laughs> we got our story and they got theirs, but <laughs> but how many knows we can come to common ground if we'll pray and keep our foundation sure. Now you can get through anything when you build a strong foundation in Christ. Did you know that? Why the, the Sermon on the Mount, you know, I studied about that. Jesus gives a word of warning. He's given a word of affirmation, and he gives a, a, a word of hope to all that were listening and a warning to those who might ignore Jesus' teaching and a word of affirmation. Now, I, I don't know about you, but hope and encouragement for those who put their teaching and their practices in God. When we hear him teach it and we respond in somewhat of a great way, in a positive way, does it mean we all, uh, you know, put Jesus' teaching into practice? Did you know that? If we think we're really in there, and all of a sudden we find a spot. We go, hey, I didn't do that quite right. 
I didn't do that quite right. I've been praying, and I'll just tell you, I've been praying for not just me, for my church family. Because I realize you face things just like I do. And I've been praying for this church. And, you know, I, I pray for myself, and then I move on. But it, like I said, I've got my own course to sweep. I covet your prayers. I'm praying for you that we can make this. How many knows? I want a, a sure foundation. Don't want to make excuses. I want to be living for the Lord the right way. When they call my name, when they tell me it's church time, I like to be like David. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I want to be there. I don't want to get hearsay. I want to be in that presence to hear the Lord move. Because that could be the night when I get my spiritual breakthrough. You ever, you ever missed a service and you, you maybe you felt bad? And, you know, I've been there when you didn't feel like coming. I understand that. I'm not trying to act like I'm Superman. There's been a few times I couldn't take it myself. But I can remember times when I pushed. I remember one time I was, I was in that recliner. I got this recliner here. I wonder if it's called a lazy boy. I mean, that's just, it's a beast, I'm telling you. I was laying in that thing. Before I know it, I was snoozing, feeling good. And all of a sudden, I woke up. Wife said, 6.30. I heard a voice said, ah, you know what? You know what? You're resting so good. Why don't you just lay there? They can go on without you. They can go on without you. And I sit there for a minute. I said, yeah, yeah, they can, they can. And all of a sudden, I said, no, they can't. No, they can't. I need to be there. I need to be there for me, for my soul. And I said, devil, get out of my way. I'm going. And when I got there, I had the Holy Ghost of if I'd laid in that recliner, I would have missed out. There have been a few times I did miss it. <laughs> I said, Lord, I took a spanking. I should have been there to get my blessing. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to see you blessed. You know I do. I mean I do. But I always say, Lord, don't you forget little mama. I, I mean, I want to be blessed too, huh? Don't you? Don't you want a blessing? I mean, don't get me wrong. I want you to have it. But I want to get one too. It's important tonight, church, to get. You know, what old fella said, you'll get what's coming to me a few times I have. <laughs> yeah, I got what was coming to me. Uh huh. But you know, when you build on a good foundation, it's strong. See, the devil wants you to think you're short. You don't. He wants you to think, why, you don't have to be all that things that preachers talk about. You don't have to be faithful. You can lay out, it ain't going to hurt nothing. Why, why? Why do you, why, what are you doing? How many knows we've got to come down to reality, don't we? When David did what he did, and he thought everything was good, you know, it wasn't long, Samuel come in, begin to tell that story about that man that was rich. He had sheep, but he took one little man's ewe lamb. David said, well, he ought to be hung. He said, you're the man. You're the man. Been a few times I've been the man, and not in a good way. I wish I could say it was always good. Been a few times I've had to go back just like David. Say, Lord, I didn't do that right. I did not do that the way you wanted me to do. And I'm going to tell you this: there are many ways to heaven. The devil will tell you that there's many ways there. No, there's not. The Bible said there's a door, and those that enter in the kingdom of heaven must go through the door. Somebody said, Well, gee. It's, it's not that close, is it? Well, I don't know. Ask Judas. He kissed heaven's door and missed it. Kissed the door, but didn't make it. So I'm telling you, it's closer than we think. Closer than we think. But I'm going to tell you, if we'll build on the right foundation, church, we're going to be all right. We're going to come out of this thing all right. Now, if you ignore God's instruction, if this is you, own up to it and say, ah, help me, Lord. And there's been a few times I've done that. It was me. It was me. I had the attitude. There's been a few times I got out of the bed and went, what part of the bed are you getting out of? <laughs> it ain't the left or right. It must be the middle. And my whole day went rotten, you know. And there's been a few times she said, you're the man. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, she has. She ain't afraid to tell me sometimes when you ain't doing it right. <laughs> God bless her heart. Just say, you got to get going, buddy. You got to get going. And I do. I really do. You see, I never I never knew uh, a lot of things about the evildoers. 
the enemy. He tries to always sugarcoat everything. He tries to make you think, ah, oh, you ain't got to live all that way like you're talking about. But I want to build on God's foundation. I want to have a solid foundation. And when I hear his instruction, it brings a lot of things to me. It brings happiness. It brings joy. It brings peace. It brings mercy. And heaven will be mine if I'll build on that foundation. Now, if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we'll be full. <laughs> you know, he didn't say you might be. Listen, he said you will be full. You will be filled. And called sons and daughters of God. Aren't you glad? And I thought about many times in the Bible when Jesus would say, God is your God. You know, they were in circumstances like a lot of us. There's a lot of people who read about it was for our benefit. Because we've been in those places. We've been where those people were. And a lot of times we have this picture of Jesus with the big hammer. He's going to hammer us down. But I'm going to tell you, God wants you to make heaven more than you want to make heaven your own self. But, but I say get a hold of the foundation of God. Build upon it. And you'll find yourself a heavenly home. Hallelujah. You see, the law is to honor God. Not man. Not man. And the law is to be a basis for living each and every day. We are put to the test many times. We are to focus on God and inward change of heart. There's been a few times he's had to change my outlook. Because sometimes I'll just be honest. I didn't always have it like I thought I had it. I thought maybe I was seeing it the way God seen it. But a few times he's talked to me, son, you ain't got that quite right. You're close. You're close. But you ain't got it quite right. And I had to go to uh, invest and get that foundation straightened out a little bit. And get down. You ever been around a wall? I've been places where I've been around people. And I mean, they're like mean. And I thought, no, this is great. This is the church. That's the way it's going to collapse. And they take the time. It's going to take them all out there, whatever they can do. And they get in there. And they get that foundation good. And they get her built right. And I want my foundation to be built right, don't you? I don't want to make excuses. And if it is me, I want to say, oh, Lord, not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are to put off all the things before us. We are to focus on God. And inward change of heart, we are to focus on the spiritual more than the physical. You know, <laughs> You know, I like donuts and I like pizza and I, I just I like all this stuff that's good for you. You know how it goes. And then I come in last night, Brother Buzzy hit, he brought a bunch of pizza here and I said, Brother Pizza, look out. He's got some of my favorite stuff here. And uh, I, I gotta get a I gotta get a governor on this, I'm telling you. I'd be three hundred pounds, I keep doing that. But God's good. And you know, when I thought about our foundations, we need to invest in sure foundation. We need to inspect spiritual foundation we need to ensure our spiritual foundation remains on a solid rock yes we do and that rock is Christ praise God praise God now we should trust the Lord shouldn't we we should always trust him knowing his promises are sure he's not going to give you a stone he's not going to give you these things God loves you he's going to give you the best that heaven has now when, when I think about these promises that are so sure, how many knows there's, I forgot how many, over 3,000 of them they say in the Bible, promises that God gave us. We need to abide in his word. We need to see the power of God. We need to see the promise of God. We need to see the provision of God. I'm going to tell you, he's got provision for us, church. He don't want us wandering around like a poor house. God has things. Now, I ain't got no Cadillac, and I ain't got no big mansion. And I, I'm not prospering that way. He gave me to get well. What are you trying to say? Go out and go to work. You got a lot of people sitting there floating in, waiting on this big check. God told me how to get a big check. Go out and work for it. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody tries to, you know, you get around, people try to put you down. Oh, you work. You must not have faith. I'm doing what the Bible said. He said a man shouldn't work, he shouldn't eat. But I'm telling you, God's good to us. God's good to us. 
Now, if you apply God's words to your life, in other words, you're going to believe it, you're going to live it, you're going to trust it, you're going to apply it, you're going to pray according to God's word, and you're going to last. We need to have faith in Jesus and his word. So, in other words, we're investing time, we're reading, we're praying, we're studying, and it's true. Have you ever had something said in the church and been preaching sometimes? There have been a few times. I said, Lord, I want to go home and read that. I never read it. I never heard it. And sometimes we know we all. quite right. I want to have it right. I don't know about you. There's no perfect way. I know that. There's a lot of people think, well, I don't get it right. They'll pray me out. Oh, I can't trust you. I, I'm sorry. You either get it right here or you don't. When they walk past that casket, your, your, your day's done. Your time's done. There's a little epitaph between your birth and your new death. That epitaph says a lot about what your life is going to be. I want to have I want to live for God. I want to trust Him. I want to trust Him. So, if we inspect our foundation, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to do a complete work. Access to our life. Reveal anything that is discontented. I want Him to tell me now that something's wrong. I don't want Him to wait till I get to heaven and say, well, you know, you, you had this going, oh, you ran good for a while. But man, something beset you. I want to know what it is right now. I want to get it right now. So that I can say, after I close these eyes and pray, my race is done. So I want him to reveal those things, don't you? And begin spiritual repairs. I want to get my foundation correct. I do. Keeping my life and our life in tune. And as the brother said the other night, before that was a few years ago, that I thought, man, I want to have my melody in tune. I want to have a song in my heart. I want to have it in tune. I want to be right with God. And God didn't bless me with that. And I'm not saying that anybody else did in my hand. He dressed me. And I said, Lord, I want to be right with you. I want to know what you think. <laughs> you know, sometimes we, we act like we got it all fixed up. You know, we, you know, everybody said, well, the preacher, he's got it all primed up. There ain't nothing wrong. I'm going to tell you, preachers sometimes get dry. They do. They get dry. And they need prayer. And there's a few people that go out and they say, well, I'm going to get right with God. I'm going to get right with God. I'm going to get right with God. I want to get in a hurry. I'm tired of making excuses. I'm tired of making excuses why my life is held back, why I'm down here. I want to keep going for God. And you know, God's going to help me. For he's been helping me. I've been praying. Lord, I haven't prayed. Uh, I prayed over there that night. I went home and I continued. I, I didn't just let that slide and say, well, I prayed in church. I went home and prayed. And asked God, God, do something in my life. Or uh, change me. Lord, get my foundation right. I want to be standing for you when the world's on fire. Hallelujah. His will. Remain faithful. Now there's people here, you've been faithful. I'm not going to say that. You have. You've been here faithful. This church has got a lot of faithful people in it. It does. And I know how the adversary does. He, you know, he never comes in a spiritual service and bothers me. Never. But he always waits till I'm at home. Oh, you, you know, you're just really, <laughs> you just thank for all that. He goes, you, you know, you really, you ain't doing a good job. If you listen to him long enough, you'll believe that. You'll believe that stuff. You'll begin to think that God's way up there in heaven. He's not concerned about my need, but he is. What disappoints me in him is that we don't call out to him. I thought about what Jeremiah 33 and 3 said. He said, call on to me. I'll show thee mighty things which thou knowest not. You want to know things from God? Call out to him. Don't let pride hold you down. I don't want them to see me cry. Men don't cry. Get out of here. Yeah, they do. And 
I've heard people, well, I ain't emotional. Somebody cut you off in traffic, see how emotional you are. Well, I get you if I had you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you ain't got no emotion. I get it. I've been there a few times. I've done such hot. I just needed that right off. I stood and hollered at man like that. I stood and I, <laughs> I stood the Lord. I was in the wrong spirit. And the Lord said, I know it. I knew you were. <laughs> I knew you were. But how many knows I want to get it right? I don't want to have that. I don't want to be sitting there with, with a, a, what's that old, a, whatever that word is. I don't want to be there where I got a fair shake. <laughs> Keep things goes on. You know, when I first married my wife, I, I'm going to tell her, Michelle, I had a temper tantrum. I'm going to tell you I did. She's seen it. One day she said, man, ain't you ridiculous? <laughs> That's embarrassing when your wife tells you that, man. She said, you're ridiculous. You see how you act here? What are you talking about? That's what they tell you that way, man. She said, well, you need to change it. You're ridiculous. And, you know, she's right. I hate to admit it, but she's right. I can go back and ask her. I need to get that right. I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be acting so silly like that. And half the stuff we get mad over, after I get told me that, what's going on? You're just a big deal. I remember one time <laughs> I sold a screwdriver. Yeah, you remember it well. Yeah, man. And, and I, I thought, well, what was that about? Now it's going to cost you some money. Yeah, yeah. I'd have been better off to sit down and shut up. I see some smiles. Maybe somebody's been there. But have that <laughs> have that foundation sure. Huh? Have it sure. You know, you know, it's it's passing now. That's the end. You understand? It's gonna keep us from somebody come get me a call. I'm sure they get the W D forty out. I don't want to try that. But I, I do appreciate God. He's he's done a work. He's working. And I'm feeling him do it. I'm feeling him do it. And I, I hope you are. I'm glad I came. I am. I enjoyed the songs. I enjoyed everything that took place. I enjoyed, I enjoyed just uh, airing out some things, huh? You ever had them airing out sessions? <laughs> I heard a man and woman, their their son, they were trying to teach him how to, you know, be be mad. So one time he looked at his mother, and you can hear yelling several blocks away. He said, "Man, Dad, what was it all about?" He thought. <laughs> Yeah, it was out in the air because everybody knew about it. Hallelujah. But God help us, yes, Lord. Help us get a good foundation. Lord, help us, Lord, have wisdom and knowledge. Help our families. We have beautiful families in the church, Lord. And God, we ask you to touch our foundation. Build it, Lord. Set it, Lord. And God, we want to give you the glory. Everybody stay. Everybody stay. And I'd rather be on the next one. Hallelujah. Build his foundation, church. He'll never be disappointed. Hallelujah. Why don't we come to this altar? Let's have some word of prayer. Come. Before we go home. It's good.
appreciates the word that we heard tonight. Thankful for the sure foundation that we can stand upon. I don't know why it came to my mind while my father was preaching two different instances. Uh, just for some reason, it just wouldn't leave my mind. And it's just a, I don't believe it's a true story. Maybe it is. And if it is, a lot of truth in it. If it's a joke, still a lot of truth in it. Three men was on a boat. They all three were from different uh, beliefs. and They all kind of had their different beliefs of what they thought about God. And they, The three was on that boat, and the one man, he forgot the bread, he said. Took off out of that boat. And them two men got to looking at him because they saw him run. And so the other man, I can't let him show me up. He said, oh, I forgot something too. And he took off running out the boat. And that third man was standing there. He says, well, I can't let them show me up. So he took off, but he went a different direction. And he went poof, in the water. When he landed in the water, the two men looked at one another and said, I guess we should have told him about the rocks over there. You see, it matters on what you run on. It wasn't that they were running across water. They just knew there was a sure foundation that they could run on. The third one, he just ran, not knowing what direction, and he just thought, I'll run. And he went, kapush. You know what matters? What direction we're going. You know, you ever watch somebody kind of when they're not paying attention, and you ever miss a step, and you see them kind of almost fall? I saw a man do that the other night. I was doing rugs, and it was a little lip. And my rug was covering that lip. And that man was walking. Next thing I know, he about fell face first. You know, it matters where you place your feet. It matters where you place your feet. But one thing I know tonight, if we place it on the word of the Lord, it'll never falter. It'll never fail. So I appreciate that word that went out tonight. As we dismiss, my father reminded me we got different ones, Sister uh, Margaret Rambler, be remembering her in prayer. Uh, be remembering uh, Selena in prayer. Be remembering little McKinley in prayer. Just seems like a little bug's going around. And I noticed that I don't see uh, So Brother Scott and Jaden, I was going to say didn't see them. Be remembering them. You know, anytime you come out of revival, it's going to happen. But how many knows God never fails? And also, again, as we're dismissing, be remembering Brother Mike, I believe Wednesday, got a procedure going to be being done, and we just ask that the Lord would go with them. So could we stand all across the house? Thank you for everyone being faithful to the house of the Lord tonight. Let's take these to the Lord in prayer as we dismiss. Lord, we just ask you tonight, God, to touch those that were unable to be here due to physically, Lord, Brother Scott and Brother Jaden, little McKinley, Lord, my daughter. Lord, Sister Margaret, Lord, I pray for Brother Mike, God. Lord, also for my father-in-law who hurt his leg, Lord, this week. I pray that you would give him strength and body and touch him. Lord, I pray for everyone here, God. You know their needs physically, spiritually, mentally, God. I pray, Lord, for each and every person here tonight that you would continually, God, walk with us, go with us, keep us safe on our way home. Help us on our jobs, Lord, and continue to give us health, Lord, to get wealth, God. And we thank you, Lord, for your provision. Lord, I pray that we would feast upon the word that we heard tonight and that we would continue to build upon that foundation. If there's any cracks, Lord, in our foundation, God, I know that you're able to repair, God. So, Lord, we ask that you go with us and we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everyone be careful out there.